morning everyone so we'll start once we'll let us the class and So good morning all. So we are very happy to welcome uh, Dr. S. Nagan again to the safety uh, program. So uh, today he is going to handle three sessions so on Supnis Matrix method. So I welcome Dr. S. Nagan and I am requesting Dr. S. Nagan to take the So uh, thank you, madam. Uh, so let us start the session on matrix uh, displacement method or uh, stiffness method. Okay. So uh, basically, we have in structural analysis, we have two different methods. Okay, the stiffness method and the force method or flexibility method. Okay. So if we treat it, okay, if we treat it, the force is the unknown. If we treat force as the unknown and find the unknown force using compatibility conditions or other equilibrium equations, etc., then that is the basis for force method. Okay? And example for force method will be our uh, strain energy method. Okay? Strain energy method is a very good example of force method. Okay? In strain energy method, what do we do? Uh, we treat the redundant force. Okay? We treat the redundant force as unknown and using the theorem of minimum strain energy okay, using the theorem of minimum strain energy we will be computing the uh, redundant force once the redundant force is obtained then we can find the other things okay, that is the basic uh, basic principle in force method of analysis okay in displacement method what do we do in the displacement method we will be treating displacement as the unknown okay say for example uh they will let us take slope deflection method okay in the slope deflection method the first step is to identify the unknown rotations and form the equations of equilibrium. Okay, so the rotations means slope. Okay, rotation means slope. Am I audible? Yes, audible, sir. sir. Okay. So there we will treat the slope as the unknown. Okay, and then finally we will proceed and we will find solve for the unknown rotations using equations of equilibrium. Okay, so if we treat, uh, if we, uh, consider rotation or displacement as unknown and we proceed then that is a uh, displacement method of analysis okay so this is the basic difference between displacement method and uh, force method okay when we do this these methods either the force method or the displacement method using matrix formulation okay, using matrix formulation then we call that as matrix displacement method or matrix force method okay so this is the a basic different between and we have examples of displacement method as slope deflection method moment distribution method canny's method okay these are all examples of uh, displacement method and strain energy method is an example of force method okay so now let us see the step-by-step -step procedure see as we have seen the step-by-step -step procedure of uh, analysis of uh, beams i'm oh, sorry portal frames with sway and without sway using uh, moment distribution method we have a step-by-step -step procedure so here also we have the uh, eight to nine steps. Okay, those steps will be common. Those steps will be common for analysis of continuous beams, analysis of portal frames, and even analysis of trusses. Okay, because these are the contents of today's uh, discussion. We need to see how to analyze uh, continuous beam, how to analyze uh, uh, portal frames. Okay, no portal frame is not included. We'll let us uh, take one example on portal frame also. Okay, and then how to analyze. Uh, trusses, pin joint trusses using this uh, matrix displacement method. Okay. So, let us see. So, is it uh, visible? Is, yes, it is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, in the matrix method, in the matrix method, see, if we know this, the steps which we are going to see now, then we will be able to develop our own coding for analysis of continuous beams, analysis of portal frames, analysis of trusses. Okay. So, like in that uh, manner, it has been developed how to do. Okay. So, the first step 
in this matrix method. And while going through the steps, I'll explain what are the element stiffness matrix, what are the structure stiffness matrix, what is the stiffness matrix. So, like we should be uh, going through at each step. Okay. So the terms will be covered in the steps itself. So the first step is to form the static matrix. To form the static matrix which we call as matrix a okay we need to form the static matrix so in which subdivision a so subdivision first subdivision is to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram okay? to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram which we call as capital p hyphen capital x diagram okay capital p hyphen capital x diagram capital p is external joint moment and capital x is external joint rotation Okay. capital P is external joint moment and capital X is external joint rotation. So that diagram is called as uh, PX diagram. Okay. PX diagram. So let us see how to draw the PX diagram because that will be the basis for, for the uh, formation of the static matrix. Okay. To form static matrix, we need, we need to know how to draw the uh, external joint moment rotation diagram. Okay. So to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram, okay. to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram, the thing is, they need to leave the fixed support in a continuous beam. Say, let us take an example of a continuous beam like this. It is a two-span continuous beam. Here, the end A is fixed, B is continuous, and C is uh, freely supported. Okay. So, leave the fixed support. Leave the fixed support. All other supports will have freedom for rotation. Okay. All other supports will have freedom for rotation. Therefore, mark this P1, X1 at B, P2, X2 at C. P1 is external giant moment at B x1 is external joint rotation at b similarly p2 is external joint moment at c x2 is external joint rotation at c okay, this diagram we call as the px diagram we are explained clearly what is p1 p2 p1 p2 external joint moment and we are assuming clockwise everything assumed clockwise okay then x1 x2 is our external joint rotation so we can very well form the px diagram for any given continuous p for any given continuous beam, you will be able to say, for example, uh, say, let us take one more example while we are solving problem. You know, we will see how to draw the next diagram that is internal joint moment rotation diagram. So, internal joint moment rotation diagram is classified as or called as capital F hyphen small e diagram. The capital F is the internal joint moment, and small e is the internal joint rotation. Okay, internal joint rotation. So, to draw this FE diagram. To draw this FE diagram, the rule is all the numbers, okay, all the numbers will have internal joint moment and rotation at their ends, okay, at their ends. So here also, we'll be assuming all the moments as clockwise. So at A, we'll be having F1, E1, at B, F2, E2, at uh, B, this side, BC, F3, E3, and here F4, E4. So you'll be having at every member, so that's what is written here, all members will have internal joint moment and rotation moment and rotation at the ends irrespective of the type of support okay, we need not uh, see uh, what is the type of support all the members will be having internal joint moment and rotation so they are called as f1 e1 f2 e2 f3 e3 f4 e4 okay so in case if you have one more span you will be having f5 e5 and f6 e6 okay so this is uh, independent of the support type of the support whereas px diagram depends on the type of support because a fixed support will not have any rotation so leave the fixed support all other supports will have freedom for rotation therefore mark as p1 x1 p2 x2 here f1 e1 f2 e2 f3 e3 f4 e4 so in this step we have any doubt because we are going to follow this step for uh, uh, problem solving similarly for portal frames and then uh, followed by trusses so if you have any doubt in forming this please get it clarified so first we need to form the external joint moment rotation diagram, PX diagram. Then we need to draw the internal joint moment rotation diagram, which is FE diagram. Okay. Sir, in PX diagram, uh, we have drawn only two sets of P and X, sir. Yes. Uh, yes. For external, uh, for inter Extra internal. Internal, so internal means Say internal means there will be internal forces developed at the end of each member. Okay. Whereas external joint, it is the say applied load or applied thing. Okay. Uh, so that is external joint moment rotation. So internal means the resistance will be developed at the end of each member. 
that's why the resistance developed at the end of each member is not uh, at the end okay so here we apply only one and the rule is we should not apply this uh, external joint moment rotation at the fixed circle okay, okay any sir. other doubt say in case if this support is also freely supported how to draw can you tell me if this is also freely supported what will be the px diagram if, if you do not have fixed support if you have a freely supported end then we need to mark here a clockwise moment as p1 x1 p2 x2 p3 x3 okay you'll be having p1 p2 p3 you'll be having three external joint moment and three external joint rotation okay Internal joint rotation will be the same. Even in case if you have freely supported end here, or if you have remote support, then F1, E1 here, F2, E2 here, F3, E3 here, F4, E2 here, F5, E5, F6, E3. so it will continue like this. Okay. Shall we go to the next part? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we need to compare these two diagrams. Okay, we need to compare to uh, these two diagrams to get the the to form the static matrix so we need to compare so while comparing also leave the fixed support we so leave the fixed support because here we can't compare here we don't have any external joint moment here we have internal joint. so we leave the fixed support go to the support p okay at support p the external joint moment we have is capital p1 okay the external joint moment we have is capital p1 okay at joint b we have internal joint moment f2 and f3 therefore p1 as you asked uh, correctly, the doubt there. So P1 should be equal to F2 plus F3. Okay. It is, this is uh, for equilibrium. Say for equilibrium, the external joint moment should be equal to sum of internal joint moment. Therefore, uh, by comparing at B, P1 here we have P1. Here we have F2 and F3. Therefore, P1 equal to F2 plus F3. Okay. Similarly, what will be the value of P2? Can you know if you answer, please? external joint moment should be equal to sum of internal joint moment here. So what is internal joint moment we have here? Compare this to four, sir. F4. So therefore we have written at C, P2 equal to F4. Okay. So this is the relationship between external joint moment and internal joint moment. Okay. Our external joint moment P1 is equal to F2 plus F3. Our external joint moment P2 equal to F4. So this relationship we should establish first. Okay. So this how can be established by comparing the uh, two diagram, PX diagram, the FE diagram, and by using equilibrium condition, basic static equilibrium condition. Okay. So the basic equilibrium condition is uh, external joint moment should be equal to the uh, resisting thickness. So internal joint moment. Therefore, F2 plus F3 should add when added, they should resist the applied P1. Similarly, F4 should resist the applied P2. Okay. Now, say the next step, what we can do is say P1, it can be written as say I want to involve uh, F1, F2, F3, F4, all internal joint moments I want to involve. So this equation can be written as F1 into 0. Since we don't have any F1 here, I can write F1 into 0 plus F2 into 1 plus F3 into 1 plus F4 into 0. The main objective is I want to involve. Uh, f1 f2 f3 in this line, uh, line in this equation so f1 multiplied by zero and after doing this you please uh, see whether the equation is altered or not so by doing this the equation should not be altered okay so f1 into zero will get cancelled f2 into one will be f2 f3 into one will be f3 and f4 into zero will get cancelled so uh, the main objective is just we are involving all f1 to f3 f4. So in case f2 f1 to f6 we have you should involve up to f6 okay now can you tell me how to write P2 involving F1 to F4? Only F4, sir. Only F1. F1. So F1 no. into 0 plus F2 into 0 plus F3 into 0 plus F4 into 1. Okay. So you can write like this. You can write like this. Now, this could be put in matrix form like this. Okay. This could be put in matrix form. How do you use the matrix form? Left side we have P1, P2. So P1, P2 matrix should be uh, P matrix. We call this P matrix as the left side. Equal to, equal to, write the coefficients alone first. What's the coefficient? 0 here, 1 here, 1 here, 0 here. 0, 0, 0, 1. So write only the coefficients. 
multiplied by f1, f2, f3, f4. After writing this, uh, please uh, check whether your equation is altered or not altered, or you are getting the same equations. Please multiply. How do we multiply matrices? So we need to multiply row by column. Okay, row by column. So 0 into f1 plus 1 into f2 plus 1 into f3 plus 0 to f4. That will be p1. So we get f2 plus f3. Then 0 into f1, 0 into f2, 0 into f3, 1 into f4. That is p2. So p2 equal to f4. So the basic equations are not altered by expressing even in matrix form like this. Okay. Do you have any doubt in this? No, sir. Okay. So now, now we can write this matrix as capital P, capital P, and this matrix as capital A, and this matrix as capital F. So P is equal to A into F is the relationship between external joint moment and internal joint moment. Okay. So the equation connecting or the matrix connecting this external joint moment and internal joint moment is called the static matrix. So it's called the static matrix A. Okay, we call this static. Why do we call this a static matrix? Since we consider a static equilibrium of any joint. Okay, since we consider static equilibrium of any joint, only by the equilibrium conditions we are writing this equation or we are forming this equation. Hence, it is called static matrix. Okay, so this is the first step in any problem. Whatever may be the continuous beam, the okay, type of continuous beam, you need to draw the PX diagram, you need to draw the FE diagram, and you should explain what is capital P, what is capital F, what is capital X, what is small e. You should explain because uh, this uh, type of approach is a newer one. So uh, if you teach this uh, technique to students, uh, if the valuer, so the valuer, so the value, anyone who values the uh, method uh, done by our students, he should know what we are doing. Okay, so we should explain what is P, what is X, what is F, what is E. So this is the first step, formation of static matrix. Okay. Is it clear? Because uh, why I am asking repeatedly is uh, uh, followed by the steps. I will give you a small problem. You will have to solve and tell me the results. So for that, you observe uh, in a with proper understanding so that you will be able to do the problem. Yeah, Shall we go to the next step? Yes, sir. Step two. Step two is to form a transpose to form a transpose so how do you form transpose of a matrix simply by transforming the rows into columns okay Let's see rows into columns or columns into rows so in a we have 0 1 1 0 that will become a column matrix so 0 uh, column 0 1 1 0 then 0 0 0 1 will become 0 0 1 as a column so a transpose so forming a transpose is simply changing the rows and columns or transforming the rows and columns so we do, we need to form this A matrix with much care because everything the subsequent steps will depend on this A matrix. So A matrix has to be done correctly. Step two is A transpose. So we know how to form the transpose. Then step three is to form the element stiffness matrix. Element stiffness matrix small k. Okay, element stiffness matrix small k. So. This element stiffness matrix, say for example, let us take an uh, example of continuous beam like this. We have a moment of finish of portion 1 is I1, span is L1, I2, L2. So we have a continuous beam like this. Okay. So this element stiffness matrix, small k, is given by, say it is. it will be a 2 by 2 matrix for each element. It will be a 2 by 2 matrix for each element. So element 1, 4E I1 by L1, 2E I1 by L1, 2E I1 by L1, 4E I1 by L1. Then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then for element 2, for element 2, 4E I2 by L2, 2E I2 by L2, 2E I2 by L2, and 4E I2 by L2. So actually, how we uh, got this element stiffness matrix is, we all very well remember the slope deflection equation, okay, slope deflection method, In the slope deflection method, say, you will be uh, writing the slope deflection equation, say, MAB equal to MFAB plus 2EA by L, 2 times theta near plus 1 times theta far. That is near, near means 2 times theta near end, rotation of near end, plus 1 time rotation of the far end. So that we derived uh, as 4 EA theta A by L, 2 EA theta B by L likewise. So that forms the basis for this element stiffness matrix. So that's why we get 4 EA by L, 
2 a bear 2 a bear and 4 a bear and we know the stiffness is the ratio of i by s okay so the element stiffness matrix shall be formed using this formula in case if you have only one member say if i am given only one member then the element stiffness matrix is 4 e i by l 2 e i by l 2 e i by l and 4 e i by l and the basis for this element stiffness derivation is our slope deflection method okay so in this uh, we can easily accommodate any i variation yeah, any i variation can be accommodated um, uh, any material variation can be accommodated say for example first portion is of the sub material and the second portion of some other material so length this will be of some length and this will be of some length this will have some amount of measure this will have some amount of measure so everything would be accommodated as we have accommodated in the case of moment distribution method the okay, moment distribution method also accommodates i variation so here also i variation can easily be handled so in this step, what we'll be doing is for e, we'll keep e as such, okay, not constant, and i1. So say for example, if uh, the this span a b has moment of inertia two i, okay, and if this span uh, has moment of inertia i, so that corresponding uh, moment of inertia need to be substituted here, okay. So that way we can form the element stiffness matrix small k, okay, small k. So for writing small k, you use uh, small letters, okay. Then capital K, these are curved lines. Use curved lines to write K. Because otherwise you get confused with the uh, small K and capital K. Capital K use straight lines and small K use curved lines. Okay. In case if we have three numbers, if we have three numbers, then what will happen? 4E I1 by L1, 2E I1 by L1, 2E I1 by L1, 4E I1 by L1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0, then this diagonally it will go. Okay, diagonal. So it will be a 6 by 6 matrix. If we have one number, 2 by 2 matrix, we have two members, four by four matrix, and you have three members, six by six matrix, and it continues depending upon the number of members. Okay, so this matrix formulation, why they have formulated this matrix formulation there? Main advantage is, see, we can easily incorporate this into a computer program. Okay, say if you compare with the slope deflection method or moment distribution method. Okay, uh, if you want to intend to write a program for slope deflection or moment distribution. And if you intend to write a program for this matrix method, handling matrices and this uh, incorporating this method into a software program will be much easier. That's why people went for. Okay, that's that's why people went for uh, this matrix formulation. Okay, matrix methods. Erase that. Then fourth step. In the third step, we have found element stiffness matrix that we are considered as individual elements. And in the fourth step. We need to assemble the elements and form the structure, entire structure. So this uh, uh, structure stiffness matrix is called as capital K. Okay, capital K. So capital K is A K A transpose. Okay, the formula for finding structure stiffness matrix is A small K A transpose. Okay, A uh, small K A transpose. In this A, we we are obtained in step one. The small K we are obtained in step three. A transpose we have obtained in step two. So we can form the capital K matrix, capital K matrix. And in this, for forming the capital K matrix, first to find the product K transpose. Okay, first to find the product K transpose and then multiply by A. That will give you the capital K. Why I am saying this to multiply, even you can multiply A into K and then A transpose, but you first multiply K into A transpose because this product will be used uh, somewhere in the further subsequent steps. So that you can use this product, uh, you can reduce the time. Okay. So, K into A transpose, you first calculate and then pre-multiply by A, you will be getting capital K. Okay. So, structure stiffness matrix is simply formula A, K, A transpose, A, K, A transpose. Then, step 5, to form K inverse, the inverse of this uh, structure stiffness matrix. So, we very well know how to form the inverse of a matrix. Okay. So this matrix method involves very basic matrix operations only. So that we should tell our students, don't get uh, panic that we are using uh, different, uh, even uh, matrix uh, <coughs> ranking and all that will not be, we will not be, we will simply using matrix multiplication, okay, inverse, that's all. Multiplication, inverse only, these things will be there, and transpose, okay. So uh, inverse is very easy, so we should teach them how to find inverse of matrix. So, we may get this capital K as either 2 by 2 matrix like this, or we may get 3 by 3 matrices, 3 by 3 matrices, or 4 by 4, etc. Okay. So, we should teach them, because in the examination, we can go up to 3 by 3. 
can, if you are doing by uh, using a computer program, we can go up to any number. Okay, but if you are doing manually, we can uh, teach them up to three. Okay, so uh, k inverse is equal to one by determinant. Okay, one by determinant of adjoint k or adjoint k divided by determinant. Okay, you should write as one by d. Okay, one by d into adjoint k. That is the formula for inverse of a matrix. So where d is determinant. So determinant. So determinant will be say if a, for example if we have a small k equal to ea into two minus three four one. I've given an example how to find the k inverse. Okay. So uh, determinant of k d that is capital D is say two into one. Okay, two into one minus three into this four. So that will be your determinant. Okay. Then one by determinant will be that is ea is that therefore you will be getting four ea. Therefore one by four ea will be uh, uh, you will be getting as one by determinant and adjoint k. So how do you form a giant k of a two by two matrix? Simply uh, change the positions of this. So two one uh, two will become here and one will go here, and simply change the sign of these two. So it'll minus three will become plus three and four, plus four will become minus four. This is the rule for forming a joint of a matrix of a two by two matrix. Okay, so to so form a joint, simply change the position of this diagonal and simply change the change the sign of this diagonal. So to get the a giant k. So once you get a joint k and once you have determinant, then you can form k inverse. So k inverse will be one by determinant of this. Okay. In case if you have a three by three matrix, in case we have a three by three matrix, I'll tell you that also. Say if you have a three by three matrix, say I have uh, a one, b one, c one, uh, a two, b two, c two, a three, b three, c three. That's a capital uh, small k elements of this matrix. So in that case also same formula. That is one by determinant into a joint k. And adjoint K is can be formed by forming the transpose of cofactor matrix. Okay, adjoint K can be found by uh, formed by forming the uh, transpose of cofactor matrix. So first we need to form the cofactor matrix. Cofactor matrix is capital A one, capital B one, capital C one, uh, capital A two, capital B two, capital C two, capital A three, capital B three, and capital C three. So three by three matrix. So how do you find capital A one? So capital A one. See, I have solved in, uh, in some uh, examples also of how to solve three by three. Just now we will see the steps, and then we we'll go to numerical example. Okay. So capital A one is a cofactor matrix. So delete the first row and first column. So remaining will be the capital A one value. Okay. The determinant of the remaining thing will be the capital A one value. Capital B one will be minus of you remove the second row and second column. So the other things will be the cofactors for uh, B two. With minus sign, how do you get this plus minus? So that is a rule for forming the cofactor matrix. So plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus. So this will be using for the forming the cofactor. So cofactors A1, B1, C1, capital A1, capital B1, capital C1, capital A2, capital B2, capital C2, capital A3, capital B3, and capital C3 is the cofactor matrix. Transpose of this cofactor matrix will be A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3. So you can form the transpose of the cofactor matrix, okay? And you need to divide by the determinant. So determinant is nothing but small a1 into capital a1 plus small b1 into capital b1 plus small c1 into capital c1. That you can use. You need not go again to calculate the values. We already have capital a1, capital b1, capital c1. So small a1, small b1, small c1. So small a1, small b1, small c1 are the given values, are the values which we have in the small k matrix. So from that we can form the inverse of the Capital K matrix. Okay. Or uh, the computer programs, uh, say the softwares which involve matrix methods, they use the uh, uh, simple subroutine form inverse of a matrix. So we can even even for, we can even form a uh, program to, to solve the inverse matrix. So that we are already studied in, or my our students might have studied in uh, the C programming or C plus program. So that uh, so we should teach it side by side. One when we teach matrix method, we should tell them. This is the main objective of matrix method is to write uh, to develop programs or coding using this matrix method. So that so some uh, students might be interested in that. So we should teach them how to write the program also if they are interested. Okay. So then step six. Step six is to form capital P matrix. So capital P matrix. So capital P is nothing but external joint moment. So to form capital P matrix. We need to first find the fixed end moments. So, as I told in the last class, in the uh, dealing with moment distribution method, we dealt with fixed end moments. Okay. So, fixed end moments we need to found 
uh, in slope decomposition method, in moment distribution method, and here in matrix method. So many methods, we, we, we need the values of fixer and moments. So fixer and moment we know uh, due to central point load minus W L by 8 plus W L by 8 to the non-central point load minus W A B squared by L squared plus W A squared B by L squared for UDL minus W L squared by 12 plus W L squared by 12. Okay, for uh, uniformly varying load pi by minus pi by 9 is W L squared plus pi by 9 is W L squared. Uniformly varying load with the intensity Q at the right hand and zero at the left hand. Okay, to minus Q L squared by 30 at the left hand and plus Q L squared by 20 at the right hand. And with applied moment M not B by L into 2 minus 3 B by L and M not A by L into 2 minus 3 A by L. So these are the fixer and moments. So ask them to calculate the fixer and moments using the standard formula for the applied loading. So once we have the fixer and moments, mark the fixer and moments in the beam. So please ask them to draw the beam, continuous beam. Mark the fixer and moments. For example, at A, I may have minus 24. At B, I may have plus 24. At the, in BC, at B, I am having minus 16. And here, plus 16. So likewise, ask them to mark the fixer and moments. Okay, fixer and moments. Then this P, the P is given by minus sum of fixer and moment at any joint. Minus of sum of fixer and moment at any joint. So I will I'll be having P1. I will be having P1 at B. Okay, I will be having P1 at B. Say if you see the diagram, P1. I will be having P1 at B. So they might have written the fixer and moments here. Minus 24 plus 24 minus 16 plus 16. So P1 is equal to minus of sum of fixer and moment at B. So at B, this side will be having plus 24. This side will be having minus 16. So 24 minus 16 will be 8. So minus 8 will be the value of P1. Okay. Similarly, P2. Uh, compare at this, uh, what is the fixed moment here? Same if, if it is uh, plus 16. So P2 equal to minus of sum of fixed moment, so minus 16. So you can find the, find the values of P1, P2 using this uh, formula. Minus of sum of fixed moments at any joint. Okay. Minus of sum of fixed moment at any joint. So for that, we need to have the fixed moments at any, at all the joints. Okay. So P1 equal to minus of M of BA plus M of BC. P2 equal to minus of M of CB. Okay, this, is the, this is how we can form the P1, P2 values. Then, step 7, to form capital X. What is capital X? It is external joint rotation. External joint rotation. So, this external joint rotation is given by capital K inverse. Capital K inverse into P. So, in the previous step, you have K inverse. Now, we have P. So, simple multiplication. K inverse into P will give you the external joint rotation. External joint rotation matrix, capital X. Okay. Then, Step eight, step eight, to form capital F. Okay, capital F is internal joint uh, moment, internal joint moment. So this internal joint moment matrix capital F is given by small k. Actually, please, this is wrong. This is not capital K. Small k into a transpose, k a transpose into x. Okay, this k a transpose only I told initially you will be using at the subsequent step. Okay, a k a transpose we have. So this k a transpose only we are using here. So, K transpose product we will be having here. That value you can take here and you can uh, find the K transpose. Okay, this small k. Please uh, change this to the small k while you while supply you the notes. Okay. So, K transpose into X. So, K transpose already we have in that step. Multiply by X. X we have formed in the previous step. Okay, here we will be getting X. So, simple matrix multiplication only involved in uh, most of the steps. Okay. So, you will be getting F. So, how many values you get F? How many unknowns we have? That is internal joint moment, how many unknown, uh, internal joint uh, rotation, that many number of uh, things you have. So, F1, F2, F3, F4, you will be getting. Okay. In case if you have F1 to F6, you will be getting uh, F matrices F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Okay. So, that depends on the number of internal joint moment or number of spans you have. Then, the final end moments. Final end moment. So final end moment is given by M A B equal to M of A B plus F1. M B A equal to M of B A plus F2. M B C equal to M of B C plus F3. And M C B equal to M of C B plus F4. This will give you the final end moment. And we can have a check the, in the final end moment values. That is, at other joints, other than fixed support, all the joints will have balance of moments of zero. Some of moments should be zero. Okay. So if this is continuous support, if, if I get the 6.15 kilometer meter here, then the, definitely I should get here minus 6.15 kilometer meter. If you have done everything correctly, you will be getting balance of moments at any time. And at the free support, you will be getting zero waiting moment, end moment. 
and at the fixed support, we're getting some negative betting amount. So all these things you can have us check values. Okay? So these are the steps in solving uh, any continuous beam problem or any portal frame problem. Okay, so these steps you are going to see in a, uh, with the help of a numerical example. Okay. So we have a two-span continuous beam subjected to say uh, 15 kilonewton per meter load UDL in span AB and a load of point load of 10 kilonewton at two meters and one meter from the same. Okay. So can you form the A matrix for this with the steps which we discussed? So to form the A matrix, first step is this I will display. So please try. So to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram, that is PX diagram. So leave the fixed support, leave the fixed support, P1, X1 here, P2, X2 here. Okay. Then FE diagram. So here they have marked the arrow is not correct. Please you correct it. Okay. FE diagram will all, all moments we are assuming clockwise only. So here they have marked the anti clockwise. So it should be clockwise here. It should be clock. This is clockwise. Correct. This is correct. Here it should be clockwise. And here it should be clockwise. All moments are clockwise. Then we need to compare a giant B. Leave the fixed support. A giant B will be having P1 here. Here we will be having F2 plus F3. Here we will be having P2. We will be having F4. So P1 equal to F2 plus F3. P2 equal to F4. Expand the terms. Expand the terms. Okay. So like this, expand the terms. P1 equal to F2 plus F3. P2 equal to F4. So P1 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 1 plus F3 into 1 plus F4 into 0, whereas P2 equal to F4 into 0, F2 into 0, F3 into 0, plus F4 into 1. Therefore, P1, P2 equal to 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, F1, F3, F3, F4. Therefore, this is matrix uh, P, capital P, equal to capital A into capital F. So, A matrix is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So here alone, there is a small mistake. That is, this moment is also clockwise. This is clockwise already. This is correct. Here, make it as clockwise. Here, make it as clockwise. So PX diagram, FE diagram, we should teach our students how to draw correctly, clearly. Any doubts? And get it clarified. So what is the next step? What is the next step? To form air transport. Very good. So what will be air transport? From this, please tell me what is air transpose. 0, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, uh, column form. OK? So 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is air transpose. Then step 3, to form the element stiffness matrix small k. So we have first span is 6 meter, and second span is 3 meter. I want to measure is constant. E is constant. OK? So we know the formula 4e i1 by l1, 2e i1 by l1, 2e i1 by l1, 4e i1 by l1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4e i2 by l2, 2e i2 by l2, 2e i2 by l2, 4e i2 by l2. Okay. So E A is constant, L1 is 6 meters, L2 is 3 meters. So substitute the values here. Okay. And here there is a mistake is there. Here E A should be taken as a common term outside. They are not uh, included. So E A, please write. Here that will be that should be E I. Okay. And 4 E I1 by L1, 4 by 6. So this will be 4 by 6. So 4 by 6 is 0. 0.67. And 2 by 6 will be 0. 0.33. So 0. 0.33.67. Here it is 4 by 3. So 1.33. Uh, 0. 0.67, 0. 0.67, 0. 0.3. Other values are 0. So this is how you'll be getting the uh, small k. This is not capital K, small k. So please say make this change. So small k elements of this matrix will be capital E I. Capital E I multiplied by this. So that the EA is here. Uh, EA can be taken as a common term. 
okay so that concept that so that uh, derivation only from that derivation we have derived the element sickness matrix so for all this is the general element sickness matrix formula okay for ea by l 2 ea by l 2 ea by l for only thing is we need to uh, substitute appropriate i here i is constant that's why i am using 2 for ea by 6 uh, if in case if it is 2i in case if it's 2i we need to substitute in the place of i1 as 2i therefore it will become 8 ea by 6 uh, okay sometimes if it, this is 1.5 i here i need to interpret this 4e into 1.5 i by 3 so 4 into 1.5 will be 6 6 by 3 will be 2 so 2 ea i will be getting so when we get the ea uh, 2 ea or 1.67 ea i take ea as a common term and write outside and i write only the coefficients so first support simply support and then idhe mari varuma sir 4e any support it is not support dependent element sickness matrix is not support dependent okay that the type of support we are accommodating in the first step so first okay. step plane amount the adanode effect eduthukku fixer and bar we are not including p1 x1 okay so adile accommodate aagudhu type of support stiffness matrix is just will be having only the stiffness values okay okay sir and only i variation and length variation that need to be incorporated adha porundhu maaru i variation l variation maarna idu maaru Oops, so what is step four? Do you remember? Structure stiffness matrix. Yes. The formula is A K A transpose. Okay, A K A transpose. So first to find K A transpose. So Small k and a transpose e is taken out there. So small k is 0.67, 0.33, 0.00, 0.33, 0.67, 0.00, 0.33, 0.67. This. So this is small k and a transpose is this. So we need to multiply row by column. Say for example 0.67 into 0 plus 0.33 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 0 into 0. So that is 0.33. Okay. Then 0.67 into 0 plus 0.33 into 0 plus 0 into 0 plus 0 into 1. Okay, so 0.67 to 0, 0.33 into 0, 0 to 0, 0 to 1, so 0. Then next row by column, 0.33 into 0 plus 0.67 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 0 into 0, that will be 0.67. Okay, 0.67. Then 0.33 into 0, 0.67 to 0, 0 into 0, 0 to 0, 0 to 0, so it will be 0. Then third row, 0 into 0, 0 into 1, 1.33 into 1 uh, plus 0.67 into 0, so 1.33. Then zero into zero, zero into zero, one point three three into zero, point six seven to one, point six seven. Then last row, zero into zero, zero into one, point six seven into one plus one point three into zero. That will be point six seven. Then this zero multiplied by zero. That is row by column. Okay, each row multiplied by uh, both the columns. First, this row multiplied this column. Then row multiplied this column. Similarly, this row multiplied this column. Row multiplied this column. That's why we get two values at the, every step. So then third row multiplied by first column. Third row multiply second column. Fourth row multiply first column. Fourth row multiply second column. That will be this. So we'll be getting this a into this. So that need to be multiplied by three multiplied by a. So zero one one zero 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 one a. So a can be taken here. Now again row by column. So zero into point three three plus one into point six seven plus one into one point three three will be one into point three three plus one into point six seven will be zero into point three three one into point six seven two. So that will be two. Okay, one into point six seven plus one into one point three three two. Then zero into zero, one into zero, one into point six seven is point six seven. Zero into point three three, zero into point six seven, zero into one point three three, one into point six seven, point six seven. Then zero into zero, zero into zero, zero into point six seven, one into one point three, one point. Therefore, we get capital K as a two by two matrix. Okay, a two by two matrix of two point six seven, point six seven, point three three. Okay, this is one point three. Let's check, make a change. This capital K. So this is step four. Step five will be k inverse. So k inverse will be adjoint k divided by determinant k. So one by determinant of adjoint k. So 
uh, k we have, been, we have found ks g a into 2.6 and 1.33 so adjoint k will be you change this position so 1.33 and 2 here this is 1.33 okay and change the sign of these two the determinant k determinant k will be a into 2 into 1.33 minus 0.67 to 0.67 Okay, 2 into 1.3 will be 2.67 minus 0.67 to 0.4489. Therefore, this will be 2.1 EA. Therefore, K inverse equal to 1 by determinant. Determinant is 2.1 EA, and this value is adjoint K is this. Even you can uh, try and multiply or divide this uh, value, all the values by 2.22, and how to simplify it as K inverse value. Okay, next step to form the capital P matrix. So, first find the fixer and moments. Span AB is subjected to UDL. So minus WL squared by 12 M of AB. So you'll be getting minus 45 kilometer meter. M of BA plus WL squared by 12 plus 45 kilometer meter. M of BC minus WAB squared by L squared minus 2.2 kilometer meter. And M of CB plus W uh, A squared B by L squared. So 4.44. So draw the diagram. Hey, actually, they are not drawn here. So please draw the continuous beam diagram. Mark the fixed and moment values at A minus 45. At B, left side plus 45, right side minus 2.22, at C, left side 4.44. Likewise, mark the fixed and moments. Mark the P diagram. Okay, mark the fixed and moments. Draw the P diagram, not the PX diagram, only P diagram. So, mark P1 here, P2 here, and compare. P1 will be equal to minus of sum of fixed and moment at B. P2 will be minus of sum of fixed and moment at C. That's why we get P1 equal to minus of 45 minus 2.22. Okay, that is 40, minus 42.78 is the P1 value. P2 will be equal to minus of 4.44. So P1, P2 is a map P matrix which is minus 42.78 and minus 4.44. So this P matrix we are uh, forming with the help of fixer and moments. So fixer and moments due to different load we know how to calculate. So how the fixer and moments mark the fixer and moments in the continuous beam, draw the P diagram and compare at P1 what is the sum of fixer and moment at P2. What is the sum of fixed moment? Minus of sum of fixed moment is the P formula, P value. Step 7 to form capital X. Capital X is equal to K inverse into P. K inverse we have formed in the previous step. But P now we have. So E will get, uh, so E will be in the denominator, so we will be getting like this. Okay. Uh, even you can multiply or divide uh, these things by 2.22. Instead of writing like this, uh, you can write 1 by E into this value can be divided by 2.22 and return. Then to form capital F, capital F is equal to K A transpose, small k, as I said, is small k A transpose into X. So small k A transpose already we have in the previous step, we are using that value into X, X we have here. So now E A will get cancelled, E A will get cancelled, and we can multiply these values. So, so we will be getting F as four values we will be getting. And this is F1, this is F2, this is F3, this is F4. So whatever we have uh, written, the rotations, we are, we are finding one by one, okay. We initially we have drawn uh, px diagram so now here we, we in this step we are finding forming p and x we in this step we are finding x then f so f we are finding here so once the internal joint moments are known then we can find the final end moments. okay so final end moments will be m a b equal to m of a b plus f1 and m b a equal to m of b a plus f2 m b c equal to m of b c plus f3 and m c b equal to m of c b plus f4 so see here uh, at the fixed moment, we should definitely get a negative bending moment. At the continuous support, we should get balance of moments. And at free support, we should get zero bending moment. Okay, that rule should be followed, or you should get it. Then only we indicate we have done all the uh, steps correctly. Then using this, we can draw the bending moment. Diagram. So here at A, at A, we have minus 53.01. Therefore, apply an anti clockwise moment here. Apply an anti clockwise moment here and see where the beam will be pushed. It will be pushed up or down. Okay, if I apply an anti clockwise moment, the beam will go upward. Therefore, mark this 53.1 upward. Then come to 28.74 here, clockwise. So apply clockwise moment and see. So it will also go upward. Then this side minus 28.54. So apply an anti clockwise moment here. So that will also make the beam move up. Here it is zero. So connect these values. We'll be getting the end moment diagram. Incorporate the free BMD. We'll be getting the final value diagram. Consider uh, a free body of AB, free body of BC, and try to find the maximum positive bending moment in each span. Here, we need to find shear force at xx equal to zero, and uh, where shear force is zero, bending will be maximum. Here, you find bending moment under the point load that will give you the maximum positive bending. Okay. So these steps we should teach our students.
two rows. So if you have any doubts, you can get it clarified in the numerical problem as well the step by step procedure which you have seen so far. So that we can go to the next problem. Static matrix, a transpose element stiffness matrix, then capital K structure stiffness matrix, K inverse, P matrix, X matrix, F matrix, and final and moments. Using that, we have solved a numerical example. So now we'll go to next example if there are no doubts. This is the next problem. Say we have a two span continuous beam at 15 kilometer per meter on the span AB. And here we have I variation also. This is I and this is 1.5. We have 20 kilometer applied at 4 meters from here and 2 meters from here. Okay. So the first step is to draw the or uh, to form the static matrix. So to draw the external joint moment rotation diagram, PX diagram. So please see how the PX diagram gets changed for this case because you don't have any fixed support. Therefore, P1X1 here, P2X2 here, P3X3 here. Okay. So this is PX diagram. The FE diagram, there's a small change. Every All the moments are clockwise. So please mark this is clockwise, this is clockwise, this is clockwise, and this is clockwise. So F1, E1, F2, E2, F3, E3, F4, E4. Okay. So now, <coughs> next you compare these two. So if you compare, here we have P1, here I have F1. So P1 equal to F1. If I compare P2, so P2 equal to F2 plus F3. And P3 equal to F4. So by comparing Fx and PE diagram, we can form the relationship between P and F. So P1 equal to F1. Uh, P2 equal to... Okay. P1 equal to F1. P2 equal to F2 plus F3. And P3 equal to F4. That's what we have written here. Okay, P1 equal to F1, P2 equal to F2 plus F3, and P3 equal to F4. So now, it can be written as uh, P1 equal to F1 into 1 plus F2 into 0 plus F3 into 0 plus F4 into 0. And P2 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 1 plus F3 into 1 plus F4 into 0. And P3 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 0 plus F3 into 0 plus F4 into 1. Because it denotes only F4, here it denotes only 2, 1, 3, here it denotes only 1. Therefore, the coefficients will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 multiplied by F1, F2, F3, F4. So P, matrix P, equal to cap matrix A into F4. Therefore, matrix A is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is how we can form the static matrix. Okay. Then A transpose. Step 2 will be A transpose. The A transpose will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So I simply transform the rows into columns. Then element stiffness matrix, small k equal to 4e i1 by l1, 2e i1 by l1, 2e i1 by l1, 4e i1 by l1, 4e i2 by l2, 2e i2 by l2, 2e i2 by l2, 4e i2 by l2, and other things are 0. So uh, substitute the i values. For i1, we have i, i2, we have 1.5 i, l1 is 6 meters, l2 equal to 3 meters. Substitute the values, take e outside, we will be getting 1.5, 0, 0, 0, 0.5, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1.5, and 0, 0, 0.51. So this is small k, element stiffness matrix, small k. Then capital K. So capital K is A K A transpose. So the rule is first find K A transpose. So write K uh, find A transpose. Take E A as a common term. So you'll be getting K A transpose. This because this we'll be using at, the, uh, at another step. First. Then A K A transpose. Pre multiply by A. So you'll be getting capital K as E A into 1.50.52.50.51. So we have here we have got capital K as 3 by 3 matrix. Capital K as 3 by 3 matrix. Therefore, we will uh, in this problem you see. How to form inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. So 
equation to form K inverse. K inverse, as I said, it is um, inverse of the four factor matrix by one by determinant of adjoint K and one, uh, one by determinant of adjoint K. So, determinant is uh, this, and adjoint K is transpose of the four factor matrix. So, we have been given, uh, uh, we have found the capital K is E equal to 1.0, 0.5, 2.5, and 0.21. So these are small a1, small b1, small c1, small a2, b2, c2, a3, b3, c3. Okay. Small a1, small b1, small c1. Now cofactor of one. Say first a1, a1 will be equal to first is plus. C. So uh, hide this throughout column. So we'll be having two minus 0.5, minus 0.51. Okay. Oh, sorry, two point five, point five one for this. So with plus value. So there's one point something. And b2. So actually, they have written the cofactor one and one. So you will write a one. This is b one. So b one will be uh, hide this two and column. So it will be equal to minus because plus minus plus. This need to be followed. Plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus. Okay. So for this, uh, we need to find minus of uh, delete this uh, row and column. So my, uh, point five point five zero and one. Okay. Similarly, find all the cofactors. So we'll be getting a one b one c one a two b two c two. A3, B3, C3, capital A1, capital B1, capital C1, capital A2, capital B2, capital C2, capital A3, capital B3, and capital C3. So, we are getting the cofactor matrix or cofactors. Find the transpose of the cofactors. Okay, Not inverse, actually, they have done uh, wrongly. So, it was uh, transpose of the cofactor matrix, not inverse, so transpose. So, find the transpose of cofactor matrix it will be capital A1, capital A2, capital A3, capital B1, capital B2, capital B3, and capital C1, capital C2, capital C3. That will be the cofactor transpose of cofactor matrix okay then how to find determinant determinant you can easily find using uh, small a1 capital a1 plus small b1 capital b1 small plus small c1 capital c1 so this is your small a1 this is small b1 this is small c1 so using that you can find determinant okay so in determinant will be involve ea so we need to so we'll be getting one by ea like this so gain was in the you'll be getting one by the ca okay so after finding K inverse, the next step is to form P. So to form P, first to find the fixed end moments. Okay, first find the fixed end moments due to applied load. So in span A, you have UDL, so minus WL squared by 12 and plus WL squared by 12. Okay, span BA, you have central point load, uh, sorry, BC, they are not uh, written wrongly, M of BC and M of CB. So minus WAB squared by L squared and plus WA squared by L squared. So load and distance are given. Then P1 equal to minus sum of fixed end moment at A. So at A we have minus 20. So minus of minus 20 will be plus 20. Then at B we have these two values. So minus of 20 minus 8.89. 20 minus 8.89. And at C we have this value alone. So minus 21. So therefore you get P is P1, P2, P3. Okay. So substitute this values to you and the next step K inverse into P to find capital X. K inverse we already have into P. So we'll be getting this capital X. Then to form the capital F. K transpose into S. This K transpose we have in the previous step. Use that value. So here, uh, here only E will get cancelled, and then you'll be getting four values for F. F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay, F1, F2, F3, F4. So final end moments will be M A B plus F1, M of A B plus F1, M of B A plus F2, M of B C plus F3, M of C B plus F4. So here A is a free disappointed, therefore you should get zero. P is continuous, so balance of moment 23.18 minus 20 point. C is a free support, you should get zero. So if you get like this, then you are done everything correctly. Then draw the bending diagram. So first let us draw the end moment, end moments. So zero at A, uh, zero at C, and 23.18 left to the left of B. Apply clockwise moment. So beam will be pushed upward. So the right side of B, apply anti-clockwise moment, it also pushed upward. Therefore, mark 23.18 upward. Connect this. You'll be getting the end moment diagram, superimpose free BMD, and share the net BMD. So this will be the net bedding one diagram. Okay. So we have solved, uh, we have seen the step-by-step -step procedure of uh, uh, matrix displacement method. Okay. And we have seen two numerical examples also. So do you have any doubt in this? Any doubt can be clarified now.
similarly okay similarly in case if you have a continuous beam okay, you have a continuous beam with the uh, sinking of supports okay with sinking of supports so where there will be change in sinking of supports where there will be a change okay so in the step say if you notice in the the step set there won't be any change in the first step there won't be any change in the uh, second step And similarly, third step there won't be any change. Fourth step no change. Fifth step no change. Only in the uh, P matrix. Well, following the P matrix, what you need to do is first you need to find the fixed and moments due to applied load. Okay. First find the fixed and moments due to applied load. Then find the fixed and moments due to sinking of supports. Yes. Okay? Find the fixed and moments due to sinking of supports. Add these two and have the final fixed and moments. Have the final fixed and moments. Use the final fixed and moments to obtain this P1, P2, P3. That is P equal to minus of sum of fixed and moment at the at any joint. So at any joint, find the sum and minus of sum will give you. So that that is the only change in case of uh, continuous beam with sinking of supports. So the steps which we have seen is a very generalized step that can be applied to solve uh, any continuous beam. Okay. Do you have any doubt? Whether it is clear, the steps are clear. Can anyone tell me? Sir. Whether the steps are clear? Clear, sir. Only one doubt, sir. Hmm, tell me. You kept a P matrix, sir. Yes. But we are finding minus of sum of FEM formula, sir. Yes. Adu yes. the set of probabilities standard. Adu me? Standard, sir. Minus, oh, minus oh, of. Oh, oh. Me. Minus of sum of FEM formula, yes. ஒரேன் Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So everything is formed based on the uh, slope depression method, moment distribution method only. Only that thing is we are doing in the form of matrices, using matrices. Okay, sir. So this example will also be quite uh, uh, different from which from which we have seen so in zoom I'll show you So do you see the this example so this is another uh, uh, continuous beam okay so what is the difference you see with respect to the previous examples and this one can anyone can you identify the difference or change number sir hmm? number sir continuous steady number 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 sir no not only number say here we have a overhang if we have spans a b and b c in addition we have a overhang portion okay we have a overhang portion so yes, in this example we will see how to accommodate this uh, overhang portion okay so if you see the steps uh, all the steps will be the same say uh, px diagram see please see how we, we have drawn the px diagram so there is no change in px diagram okay we are leaving the fixed support 
we are leaving the fixed support is the screen visible clearly yes sir okay so we are leaving the fixed support mark p1 x1 here p2 x2 here okay similarly the next is the fe diagram fe diagram also please see there is no change at, at the end of every at the end of every span you will be having internal joint moment and rotation there is f1 e1 f2 e2 f3 e3 f4 e4 and for overhanging we need to uh, include the internal joint moment and rotation okay this this should be noted okay so though if that's a word and this we are not uh, considering here in this step so then we need to compare so p1 will be equal to f2 plus f3 and p2 will be equal to f4 okay that's all so P1 equal to F2 plus F3 and P2 equal to F4. So we are expressing that as P1 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 1 plus F3 into 1 plus F4 into 0. P2 equal to F1 into 0 plus F2 into 0 plus F3 into 0 plus F4 into 1. So we can form P1, P2 equal to 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Therefore, we can get the A matrix. Then form the A transpose. Okay, A matrix, there is no change. A transpose, we can easily form. And element stiffness matrix also. Uh, say standard uh, thing 4 EI1 by L1, 2 EI1 by L1, etc. And we do not uh, incorporate the overhang portion here. Okay, so where we accommodate the overhang portion, that I will tell you. Okay, so here also no change in the element stiffness matrix, same we'll have to use. And then capital success stiffness matrix, aka a transpose. So first we need to obtain k a transpose as I explained to you already. Then multiply by a, you'll be getting capital K, find k inverse. Okay. K is this, so K inverse will be 1 by EA, uh, giant K by K is okay, determinant K, determinant K will be this, therefore it will be getting K inverse. So now to form P matrix, we will be having some change, okay, in the formation of matrix P. So for, for to form matrix P, first we need to find the fixer end moments, fixer end moments, span AB subjected to UDL, therefore M of AB equal to minus WL squared by 12. M of B equal to plus W L squared by 12. So W L is available. So you can find the fixer and moments. Okay. Then in span B C, you have a non-central load or central point load. Non-central -non load. So calculate the M of B C values. So as I told you, we need to mark the fixer and moments like this. Minus 50 at A, plus 50 at B, minus 7.5 at B, plus 12.22.5 uh, at C. Okay. Now we see how we are accommodating the overhanging. So in this problem, we have overhang CD. Okay, CD is the overhanging portion. Okay, so in the overhanging portion, you calculate the actual moment produced by the load at the overhang. So what is the actual moment produced uh, about C? We have 10 kilonewton, this one meter. So 10 into one, uh, 10 into one kilonewton meter will be the actual moment. Okay, actual moment. So this need to be balanced. So balancing moment to be anti-clockwise. So this is actual moment I have written here. Actual moment equal to 10 into 1. Balancing moment. Balancing moment will be, should be anti-clockwise moment of 10 kilonewton meter. So the balancing moment is minus 10 kilonewton meter. This minus 10 kilonewton meter need to be written here. Let's see where we have making the change. Okay. See, see, see here, this is fixed and moment, minus 50 plus 50, minus 7.5 plus 22.5. This minus 10 we are right, we need to take into account here. So this takes care of the overhanging portion. So this minus 10. Therefore, uh, as I said, uh, we need to draw P diagram, P1, P2 here. So now if we compare, at B we have P1 here, P1 equal to minus of sum of fixed and moment. So P1 equal to minus of 50 minus 7.5, okay. Similarly, P2 equal to minus of uh, 22.5 minus 10. So this will accommodate the uh, overhang portion. So P2 value, we see here. P1 value minus of 50 minus 7.5. P2 value minus of 22.5 minus 10. Okay. So this is the change in case we have overhang portion. In this step only will have same. Other all other steps are same. So once you have the P matrix, so once you have the P matrix, then uh, K inverse into P will be X, uh, then F equal to K transpose into X, so everything will be same. Okay. Oh. 
okay k inverse into p and then so once you get uh, the uh, f matrix you can get the final end moments so final end moments i'll show you the final end moments ma b equal to mf a b plus f1 mb a equal to mf b a plus f2 mb c equal to mf b c plus f3 and mcb equal to mf cb plus f4 and if you notice actually this should be this i should get as 10 kilonewton meter the after finding final if it's a final end moments you mark in the diagram the continuous beam here minus 62.5 here 25 minus 25 so at any joint that should be moment balance so similarly here in the overhanging portion i am getting mcbs 9.7 approximately equal to 10 that's why i have written 10 and right side i have minus 10 so that's also balance of moment so this is how we can check our own values in the matrix displacement method finally we can have a check whether we have done everything correctly this will indicate you uh, the correctness okay So, do you have any doubts in analysis of beams? This is the menu diagram for the overhang portion. So, here we have uh, we have marked 62.5 anti clockwise. So the moment will be marked up. Here we have clockwise so up, then anti clockwise upward. Here 10 uh, cl uh, clockwise upward, so minus 10 anti clockwise upward, and here 0. So connect these points 62.5, this 25, this 10, 0. So that will form the end moment diagram. Then superimpose 3 BMD. We're getting the maximum possible minimum. Here. So see here to find O1, that is maximum positive bending moment um, we're writing mxx finding mxx by treating the uh, free body of ab i'll be getting mxx and then uh, i'll be bending shear force at xx also where shear force zero bending will be maximum so i got x equal to some uh, 2.81 meters at 2.81 meters i got bending maximum positive bending moment. The, the shear force diagram here shear force takes zero so at this point there is maximum positive anymore in case of point load under the point load you can find the maximum positive bending moment so today evening i'll send both the materials to madam okay uh, moment distribution method as well this matrix method i'll uh, send share my material okay. So in the afternoon we will continue. In case you have any doubt, we can get it clarified now. So the Mirajan is there. Where are Putran, sir? Sir? Uh, is it doubt, Rika? Killing, sir. Less, sir. Clear. Okay. Prabhu, Mr. Prabhu. Sir, killing, sir. Is it doubt, Rika, sir? Killing, killing, sir. The plenty clarity, I think, sir. No work on work on salary, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No work on work on salary, sir. Doubt, sir. The clarity, I think, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So the clarity, I think, must be with you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, sir. Professor Vijay sir. Yes sir. How do you follow the method? You can follow the different method. You can follow the method. Yes sir. It is easy. It is easy to follow. Yes sir. Easy to follow. Okay. Yes sir. Okay. Now, this is a generalized thing. So, we will see the portal frame. We will see the truss. So, we will see the base. We will see the base. We will see the students. They will find it easier to find it easier to find it. Okay, sir. Okay, professor. Very happy meeting you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir? Yes? Sir, professor, first of all, professor, K is not the first of all, sir. No, no, no. He is not in Bangalore, sir. He is not in the numerical methods. He is not in the numerical methods, sir. He is not in the numerical methods, sir. 
இவர் வந்து ப்ரொஃபஸர் வி முத்து இவர் வி முத்துன்னு சொல்லி வெரி சீனியர் ப்ரொஃபஸர் அவர் வந்து ஆமா மதுரையில உள்ள பெரிய பெரிய ஸ்ட்ரக்சரல் இன்ஜினியர்ஸ் எல்லாமே சார்ட்ட படிச்சவங்க அவரோட ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் தான் இன்னைக்கு <laughs> மேடம் <laughs> 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 Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank yes, ma'am. It's done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, thank you, sir. So, we can join again at 1.30, sir. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.